Hello everyone, welcome back. N3FJZ here with more ZX front panel work. And uh, here's some improvements I made to the, um, the firmware, which I have up on the website now. And what I've done is I improved the uh, forward power, reverse power, and SWR uh, indicators on the, uh, the Tune GUI screen. And what I've done is I've uh, completely rewritten the um, the uh, algorithms in the method of sampling the uh, forward reverse power so that the bar graphs now are linear and I was able to add a numeric uh, representation of the power at the top there and the way this works is is when you're in the GUI, GUI tune screen uh, there is a line that's asserted that will unbalance the balanced modulator and that will send the carrier out to the antenna through the PA. In this case, if you look at the top bar graph and then of course the watts forward display, I have a little mini bar graph to the left that, that gives you fractions of a watt and then once you get into the wattage the uh, larger bar graph will take over. So here we've tune up about five watts out and if you look at the reverse watts and I'm changing the uh, variable capacitor on my antenna match and you can see the SWR reacting to that now eventually I'll couple the data that comes out of this uh, screen into a protection circuit that will shut down the PA if uh, the SWR is, uh, exceeds a certain limit, and I guess I need to look, have a lookup table or something that will compare the output power uh, so that if it's very, very low watts, then you can tolerate a higher SWR. And if it's a higher output power, you probably want to shut it down earlier. Okay. Okay, so um, in order to make this work, what I had to do was I had to change my uh, power detector module, my Stockton bridge, where originally I had uh, calibration potentiometers here at 50K to ground, uh, but I was finding that that division was loading down the output of the bridge to the point where the calculations couldn't, weren't accurate for the power level I was looking at or that was being sent through the bridge. So what I've done here is that if you've already built the bridge, you're going to have to remove the uh, calibration pots and uh, send the, uh, the output of the bridge directly out. Okay, now on the receiving side, uh, I used to have a, uh, on the four power reverse power, input to the front panel Arduino controller. I had a 1K resistor and a Zener diode for protection, but I was finding that Zener diode was conducting uh, even before 5.1 volts. Uh, so what I did here is I've changed the design to use a uh, very high impedance uh, uh, divider network here with a 220k resistor and a 470k resistor. And that should, uh, that will do two things. One, it will uh, reduce the high uh, peak voltage from the bridge to below 5 volts unless of course you would uh, I think it's uh, around 60 or 65 watts you'll you should produce 5 volts out of the bridge but with the higher impedance you're not loading down the diodes in the detector circuit so you'll have to make that change essentially what you'll be doing is uh, replacing the Zener diodes with a uh, 470 k, k ohm resistor and the 1K resistor is replaced with a 220K. Now the, the, the input pins to the Arduino are very high impedance, so they shouldn't influence this voltage divider. Okay, so again, here's the action. And uh, I made the loop tight enough so it's effectively real-time. There is a little bit of delay there to prevent a lot of the jostling of the uh, digits. So you'll have 
at least a fairly stable reading here. And the idea is to get the reverse power as low as possible in this case. All right, another change or another feature I've added is um, is uh, temperature sensors. And I've added temporary indicators on the main screen. Eventually, I'll probably devise some other means of uh, presenting this data. And these are uh, two temperature sensors that will be uh, glued onto the top of the final transistors in the PA. Uh, so that way I can also monitor the temperature and shut down the uh, PA if the temperature exceeds a certain value. Now, uh, these temperature sensors are very rudimentary. Um, they're not very accurate and their resolution is pretty coarse, uh, being 2.2 degrees C per uh, analog count, or four, around four degrees Fahrenheit between steps. But um, it should be sufficient uh, to protect finals, because uh, we're not looking for any very precise temperature measurement. We just want to see if it exceeds some uh, absolute value in the um, in the very high uh, temperature range. Um, I'm thinking maybe 100 degrees C or so. I have to need, need to go back and look at the uh, the data sheets on the transistors and then also take into consideration uh, the delay time that the uh, if you're gluing a diode to the top of the case of the transistor, there's going to be a lag time from the temperature of the actual transistor substrate itself. So it would have to be some value there. But what I'll, I haven't fully uh, developed how I'm going to do this, but perhaps there'll be maybe a temperature lockout, uh, the screen that you'll have to clear, or just the fact that the temperature has a, a lag factor, maybe just shut the transmitter output drive off or the you know, set the PTT off to turn the PA off once the temperature is reached. I don't know yet. But anyway, uh, that's, and let me see if I can get one of these sensors to climb a little bit just to give you an idea of the uh, temperature there. Now, the, the I have the uh, B finals uh, sensor diode immersed in a, in a hot liquid. And you can see that uh, it's increasing to uh, 113 degrees or so. 44 degrees C, the other sensor is still in just air at this point. So, and I'll just take it out. Put it back to where it was. And okay, it's back in free air again. And here on the schematic, you see that the uh, the diodes are just essentially attached from ground to the Arduino input pin. And so far, what I've done, the experimentation I've done, is I've just I just have them connected with twisted leads here. I don't know how effective that's going to be. And of course, the, the, these terminal strips are just temporary measure so I could uh, move these sensors around but eventually they will be soldered on top not soldered but glued on top of the final PA transistors very much the same way as they are let me go light over here the same way as they're glued onto the top of these uh, transistors for my um, linear amplifier something like that because right now here is the, uh, the the PA that's going to be part of the uh, the ZX SSB2. It's it's simply a 20 watt final. And what I'm doing now is I'm running that 20 the output of that 20 watt final. Uh, I turn the output power down with this pot 
to one or two watts and that of course then feeds into the uh, 50 watt linear which I'll have a series of videos on this at some point I'll probably uh, develop this into its own standalone uh, linear power amp 50 watt power amplifier uh, so that's where those uh, diodes will be soldered to the top of these finals or glued okay another improvement I made with the firmware is I've added this uh, this gate indicator that will flash each time the Arduino receives a one pulse per second pulse from the uh, GPS module and that of course triggers the uh, the frequency counter to latch the count and send it to the Arduino so we have a little gate indicator here and that's useful if you can't see the uh, the GPS receiver if it's inside of a box at least you know you're getting a gate signal if, if your frequency is is not counting or not showing a frequency in this case uh, if we turn the the level from the SI5351 down to zero, you see that the uh, the measured frequency goes to zero. So if you've seen that and you've seen your gate flashing, you know you're at least you're gating the, the frequency counter. I'll turn it back up again here. And that is, uh, of course, as I outlined in a prior video, uh, with the SI5351, I'm only using two of the output channels for the actual receiver and transmitter, and that leaves me one channel free. And what I do is that I set that to 10 megahertz output. And with that, you can determine if your SI5351's uh, crystal trim is set properly to give you an accurate frequency out in this case. You can see if we change the trim here, we can change the output, which implies that the uh, since it's a PLL, it's working off that one crystal oscillator internal to the SI5351. It should be proportional to the other channels as well. So if you get 10 megahertz, 110, then it should, you would imply that uh, the other channels were also set to the proper output frequency. Okay, so that's the improvements I have. Um, like I said before, I'm having a great time doing this project. And, uh, and even if you don't build it in, in its entirety, uh, do as I've done with other hams projects and other builders uh, that put their work up on the web, is that you can mix and match some of the different features. You may want to build a crude thermometer or temperature sensor or maybe a frequency counter standalone or or other fast aspects of the uh, uh, the um, essentially it's a uh, it's a bit x 40 or bit x 20 based RF deck which I've added other improvements to over the years so it probably has other than its general block diagram layout it has probably very little to do with the original bit x 40. Uh, but uh, just kind of mix and match different circuits that I've found through experimentation, which ones work best for me. Again, uh, this is to demonstrate, this whole project is to demonstrate what I've done, what's worked for me. Uh, I guess it should work for you too if you recreated it. Of course, you want to be safe if, um, if you're working with uh, hand tools and other chemicals and things. You want to make sure that you have the skills uh, necessary to do this safely and gets, get help from local Elmers if, if you're really unsure or something. Anyway, enjoy. Um, I think with this, uh, with the, um, the SWR meter, Stockton Bridge, the power meters, and the temperature sensors, I'm, I think I've pretty much fulfilled all the feature set. And now I need to start concentrating and getting this thing built into a box. So I'm looking forward to, to doing that. I'm going to do some more refinement to the software uh, to clean some things up, perhaps. But everything you've seen on this video, the firmware is up on the web now. 
and the schematics are up there too. So all the changes I've described are documented. So 7-3 everyone, N3, FJZ.